Is Netflix truly on the brink of a downfall? In a world now dominated by streaming, Netflix has become a household name. Even just asking someone to Netflix and chill was briefly a popular way to ask someone out. But as competitors rise and industry dynamics shift, cracks have begun to appear in this digital empire. Join us today as we delve into the rise and fall of Netflix and the streaming giant's uncertain future. Netflix was founded on August 29, 1997 by two rich guys named Reed Hastings and Mark Randolph. At the time, Netflix was innovative, convenient, and tailored to the customer. Customers would receive a catalog of the movies that Netflix had to offer, and Netflix would send out DVD copies of whatever they picked directly to their homes. This made Netflix a direct competitor of brick-and-mortar video rental stores like Blockbuster. They offered to sell Netflix to Blockbuster in 2000 for $50 million, but Blockbuster refused. As technology evolved, so did Netflix's approach. In 2007, they introduced a game-changing feature, streaming. Blockbuster, slow to adapt to the digital shift, found itself burdened with expensive retail locations and an outdated business model. Their attempt to mimic Netflix's mail-order service was too little too late. Netflix's superior technology, vast content library, and original programming made it the preferred choice for millions. By 2010, Netflix had powerhouses like Blockbuster completely out of business and solidified themselves as innovators in the entertainment industry. So, where did they go wrong? Netflix had used up its previous advantage of being the early pioneers of streaming. As they sought to expand their global footprint, they faced the new challenge of catering to an international audience with diverse tastes. In 2012, they made the bold move to begin production of their own original content. Popular series like Orange is the New Black and House of Cards were released on the platform in 2013 to overwhelming success. Netflix's approach to dropping an entire season at once, as opposed to weekly episodes, was revolutionary and reshaped viewers' consumption habits. Not only did this solidify the company as a serious contender in the realm of content creation, but it also set the stage for what would become a signature strategy — the creation of compelling, binge-worthy original series and movies. This rapid expansion and success didn't go unnoticed. Major studios and broadcasters saw the potential and profitability of streaming, especially as cable subscriptions were being cancelled left and right. Companies like Amazon, Disney, and HBO began developing their own platforms, bringing with them exclusive titles and vast content libraries. The streaming wars, once a term thrown around casually, became a stark reality. New platforms emerged, with names like Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, Apple TV, and Peacock each vying for attention, each bringing their own exclusive shows and movies. Choices became more abundant, and not everyone's choice was Netflix. To add to the mix, Netflix, in its bid to continue producing original content, decided to increase its subscription prices. This didn't sit well with everyone, especially when alternatives were just a click away. Netflix's strategy of investing in original content became not just a unique selling proposition, but a necessity. As competitors pulled their content to feature exclusively on their platforms, Netflix doubled down on its originals, pushing the boundaries of storytelling and diving into diverse genres. Then came the COVID-19 pandemic. In 2020, customers were forced to spend much more time at home. Netflix saw a huge surge in numbers of watched hours and subscriber growth on their platform, but production was forced to slow to a stop as release dates of eagerly awaited titles were pushed back further and further until they could safely resume production. In 2021, a significant challenge arose for the company as its subscriber count started to drop. After years of consistent growth, the company experienced its first significant slowdown. This, of course, made investors nervous. It was obvious that Netflix needed to reevaluate. Instead of focusing on gaining new subscribers, they decided to pick on the subscribers that they already had. At the time, it was common for friends and family members to share Netflix accounts between households. The company had previously turned a blind eye to this, but in late 2021, Netflix began to test the waters, prompting some viewers in other countries to sign up for their own account if they weren't watching with the subscriber. Customers were not a fan of this change, pointing out that not everyone has a traditional household where everyone's home every day. Some people have to travel for work or enjoy traveling for fun and having access to Netflix while they do so. This wasn't the only strategic change Netflix made. As the company grappled with slowing subscriber growth, it revisited its pricing model. Historically known for a no-ad experience, Netflix introduced tiered pricing, enticing users with lower prices supported by advertisements. 
For many, the idea of ads on Netflix seemed antithetical to the brand's identity. However, Netflix banked on the fact that a more affordable tier would attract a demographic deterred by the platform's increasing subscription costs. Subscribers on ad-supported tiers make Netflix and other streaming platforms much more money, so Netflix's ultimate goal was to make the ad-free subscriptions as inconvenient as possible. However, as is often the case, introducing ads came with its own set of challenges. Not only did it change the user experience, but it also meant that Netflix was now competing not just for viewership, but for advertising dollars in a market already saturated with established players. These decisions were symptomatic of a larger truth. Netflix was now part of a larger ecosystem where every decision impacted their standing and where adapting quickly was not just a choice, but a necessity. As Netflix has boldly claimed its evolution into a media company, it now faces an uphill battle with powerful unions like the Writers Guild of America and SAG-AFTRA. Netflix recovered and boasted a staggering $31.6 billion in revenue in 2022, marking a 6.7% increase from the year prior. But despite these immense earnings, they refuse to provide a living wage to the writers and actors who fuel their content. In an attempt to source new content without relying on writers and actors in the US, Netflix has greenlit projects from regions previously underrepresented on their platform. From Korean dramas to African comedies, Netflix now aims to become a global mosaic of stories, appealing to tastes from every corner of the world. In April 2023, Netflix pledged to spend $2.5 billion over the next four years in South Korea alone. This strategy taps into new markets and has garnered a fresh wave of subscribers who are eager to see their own cultures and narratives reflected on a major platform. But public sentiment has begun to sway. Grassroots campaigns urging users to stand with the underpaid creatives have been gaining traction. Social media platforms are abuzz with testimonials from writers and actors detailing their struggles, juxtaposed against Netflix's soaring profits. The narrative is clear. While the platform profits, those responsible for its content have been left out in the cold. The repercussions have been palpable. Popular US series face delays due to halted production, leading to a content vacuum. Smaller streaming competitors like Dropout.tv have been quick to capitalize on this gap, as they've agreed to pay all their employees a living wage in order to continue to produce content. Smaller production companies like A24 have also adjusted to industry demands and resumed work. Netflix remains unmoved even as rumors circulate of show cancellations. A significant portion of Netflix's subscriber base, particularly the younger, socially conscious demographic, is supportive of grassroots movements to cancel subscriptions and put pressure on Netflix to pay their workers fairly. So is Netflix doomed? In short, it's up to them. The landscape of streaming has evolved rapidly, and with it, the challenges Netflix faces are multifaceted. While the company's early innovations positioned it as a vanguard of streaming, the tide of industry changes, competition, and evolving consumer expectations have muddied the waters. Netflix's current predicament lies not just in the economics of streaming, but in the wider socio-cultural implications of their decisions. The company can't keep expecting people to pay top dollar for their content or support them by sitting through ads while the company itself refuses to pay its workers enough to survive. While it may be premature to pronounce a verdict on Netflix's future, what's clear is that their choices in the coming months will be instrumental in shaping their legacy. The company finds itself now at a crucial juncture, needing to decide between short-term profitability and long-term success. Who knows, maybe Netflix will join Blockbuster among the many bankrupted businesses that refuse to listen to their customers. Or maybe they'll channel the innovation that started the company in the first place. The path they choose will not only determine their fate, but also set a precedent for the larger industry on the road ahead. And with that, we've come to an end. Comment down below about your thoughts, and don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.